Today is May 5th, 2022. Our materials got delivered for the quarter acre organic regenerative market garden. We began our no-till journey on a quarter acre of just grass directly on top of compacted red clay located in southeast Louisiana. This, this is a no-till garden. It was started, we did, a year ago. So in a year's time, she turned completely hard red clay. I mean hard red clay into a garden that's very beautiful. Uh, you, you take your okra. <laughs> that small is bearing okra like crazy. It, it's hard to believe. It, just a quarter acre. Now, here, down there, But it was, it's a year old. And notice, she just planted the tomatoes. They're coming on beautifully. There, there, sunflower seeds. Uh, you've got squash coming. Uh, okra, see more okra out there. And it, it's not, it hadn't been planted that long and it's growing like crazy. Uh, it, it's a miracle what you can do when you start off like this. See there? Got a rock down in that ground, and you won't believe what it is. And look at the pumpkins. They have a word. Look at them. <laughs> That's hard to believe. And I want to point out right here for the viewers, you can see where I was hit with squash vine bar really, really badly. And we did treat with the Vaseline and the hot sauce. And I'm guessing by the amount of radiance in that hole that I was able to kill the squash vine bore because they're probably eating it. You can see some wilting there. But if you look, the plant is still extremely healthy and producing very well. And this is what my dad and I really keep trying to encourage people. It's about soil health. A healthy plant can deal with some pest pressure and still produce for you. Because again, this plant was hit with squash vine borer. I can show you where I treated with Vaseline. And look, it's still producing. I did not have to pull the plant up. Yeah, that's the Vaseline. Mm-hmm. That got it. Yep. And look, over here, same thing, guys. I had to treat this big, beautiful plant you're looking at right here. When you get down in here, you can see where I treated with the Vaseline. And also right there. Yeah. I mean, I really had to treat. These plants were hit in four or five different areas, but look at them. Look at that. They're still standing. They're still healthy. It's all about soil health. All right. Now, the only thing bad about having a garden that can produce some fine, nutritious plants is the deer. <laughs> they, they come visiting when you're not looking. They chew the top off everything. That's here. They kind of missed that, but I don't know why. <laughs> but they chewed these down right here. Look, chewed it down to the ground. Uh, they chewed these down. That corn all out through here has been chewed down, I mean literally to the ground. But, that's why you buy another so freezer. As my dad just pointed out to you guys, we were visited by the local deer population. So what we're going to be doing tonight, this happened, all this damage to the corn happened in one night. So tonight, the German Shepherd will be on a running lead out here in the front part of my garden and the Dotson will be outside all night so they can do garden duty. I always tell you guys, make sure your dogs have a job. Now, I would love to be able to leave my German Shepherd free to run. A, he would trample the garden chasing the deer and B, he wouldn't stop chasing the deer. So I'd most likely lose him. So he's gonna be tied up out here to sound the alarm so that the Dotson sleeping on the porch can get up, chase the deer out of my car. yellow mustard is a cover crop. The, your, your bees, pollinators love it. They go crazy over it. And it makes a fine cover crop. And you just smother it down later on in the year, and let it go back into the ground. Yeah, we're actually fumigating with it. Sunflowers, see, just, basically some of this stuff is strictly to bring in pollinators. Because you won't need them. You definitely need them. Yeah. All right. They'll tell you not to prune them until late in the year. This is not pruning. This is thinning. You come in here and you go down. You come in here and pick out two or three of the biggest limbs. 
You like this one right here? You like that one? Keep it. That's a nice one. Keep it. Uh, here's a good one. Keep it. Maybe these four. Or even five. I wouldn't go much further than that. Then cut all the rest of them out. They're all growing off one root. That root is doing all this. It's not going to bear. Oh, because it's growing so big. If it, if it bears, you'll have one fig, maybe. Now, next year, you'll have a massive tree. But if you prune it back now and let the growth go to the big ones, you'll have some beautiful fig trees, and they'll bear. Like that one down here is bearing. Yeah, because there's not the first fig on this. As beautiful as this is, uh, there is, my dad's not wrong, there's not one fig on this entire gorgeous no it's just uh it's just growing all right now when we first started here you couldn't even get a shovel in this ground i mean it was rock hard it took days of cracking the soil loose and, and putting the uh, comp uh, straw on top and something else it looks like it's bare it's not she's got plants coming out of the ground all in here so yeah, we're actually able to direct seed 50% of the crops we're growing in this quarter acre no-till this year. Something else I want to point out to you guys is you see how vibrant green all the plants are as they're coming up. The reason for that is one of the things that we use as a nitrogen fertilizer here at Starkey Farmstead is rabbit urine. So rabbit urine is a nitrate fertilizer. In other words, it is in a form that the plants can immediately uptake it. Just like when it rains, if you caught our video on you can't beat rainwater, rainwater is like a fertilizer for your plants because it drops nitrate down when it rains and your plants absorb that and it's like a nitrogen boost. It's the same thing with rabbit urine. So like my dad said, even though it may look bare in spots to you, there's a lot of things, and we're still covering out here with hay, <laughs> yeah. but there's a lot of things starting to come up that we just direct seeded, and these are cantaloupes. Um, we've got watermelon in the soil this year, and this whole area that we're actually walking towards right now, all of this will be cow horn okra that we're direct seeding this week, as well as more cucumbers and a second round of organic pumpkins yeah, oh yeah up here guys what we've got going on are bell peppers and tomato plants so we wanted to know my dad and i were curious you can tell we've got the trellises down here with the tomatoes we trellised on the other end of the quarter acre with the tomatoes we've got inner crops of bell peppers over there too what we wanted to know was in a deep mulch system could we put in bell peppers and tomatoes and not trellis them like are they going to be able to run on the ground and not get the traditional diseases that tomatoes love to get when they touch the soil because technically they're, they're not, not touching the soil. they're not touching the soil because this just looks like some leaves to you guys but we're literally standing in about two foot of hay um it is heavy mulched and yeah we do get a little bit of breakthrough with weeds and stuff and that's okay. That's not a problem. You need roots in the soil to amend your soil. So where we've got it heavy planted, the plants have taken over and we have very few weeds. Where we have less plants because the plants are in the, the growing stages, we have more weeds because something's gonna take that space up. But yeah, we really appreciate you guys coming on this journey with Papa, Sammy and I. Like we said, this is, exactly 12 months in the making and if you've never seen our very first no-till video we invite you to go back and look in our no-till playlist and look for video one where this was nothing but an open field last red year field. a red clay field and this is what my dad and i've done with it in one year using nothing but rabbit manure worm castings and uh compost we make here at Starkey Farmstead and a whole lot 
of trash hay. Hay and cover crops. And cover, yeah, this year we, in, in, this is our first time to do cover crops. So we're super excited about that. And uh, really, really excited about that. In the fall, when we cover all this back up with the tarp and let it ba die back into the soil, I think next year this area is just gonna grow like crazy. like crazy, like crazy. So you guys, if you've never subscribed or commented or liked, we encourage you to do so. Come on this journey with us. You'll see a lot of no-till growers online, Yeah. but they've been doing it for 10 and 15 years and it can, it can feel overwhelming when you see where they are and where you're trying to start. Well, guys, we're still what you would call starting. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, thanks for coming on the no-till journey with us. Thank you. Kill them. They don't tear them. They don't hurt them. It's real smooth and soft. And you just keep them up straight. Go around them real gently. Come right off in. Come right back. And keep going. And it really works good. Everybody ought to have one of these. I love trellising with it. Everybody ought to have one of these, no joke. I know, right? <laughs> because this makes it so easy and so nice. You can buy these uh, at, any, at any hard, uh, where would you buy them, Samantha? I got that one online. Steven ordered it for me. I think all together that was like $24. I'll tell you one thing. It works wonders. It really does. Oh, and I like that. That easy and you got all those trellised up just like that. Look at that, you just did a whole row of tomatoes in a minute. Oh yeah, and there's no problem. And it works great. How about these over here? Oh look, look dad, let's do this one. And you can go through here and do a quick thing. You get on the back side of it. Let's stay over here. Yeah. It keeps your tomatoes neat and clean looking. I got her. Sometimes it's like a little jigsaw puzzle. Ready? Yeah, I don't want to break anything. Uh-oh. What kind of tree is that? Wax myrtle. Wax myrtle. The old stuff that's with ball it. Ball the uh, seeds and sometimes the leaves and get the, the little wax it puts off, mm -hmm. skim the top of the water, and it'd make wax myrtle candles. Cool. Ooh, and you won't believe the scent. It, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, it's hard to you believe see? that scent. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, God, that I'm smells good. Let's walk the rest of the pine because uh, this right. weekend, Steve's cleaning out, the, well, next weekend, he's cutting all the trees that we don't have a use for. What's this? Now this, that's that kind of tree. It puts off a chemical that kind of inherits the stuff not to grow around it. Oh, so it Get stunts the growth, yeah. Just totally get rid of that. Now, this is wax myrtle. Okay, so another wax myrtle. Now, you don't want to get rid of that. Now, all these all these China trees. Aren't those that, Chinese tallow or something they call it? Tallow, yeah, tallow trees. Get rid of them. All of those, yeah. okay. That's wax myrtle. See it? Yeah. It may accidentally get chopped down with it, though. Those are all tallow trees. Yeah, that's a tallow. All that's got. Good Lord, look at them taking over. Now, they'll take over. I mean, they go crazy. Even when you cut them down. They're going to shoot right back up. You got to keep them chopped down for a long while. Now, that's beautiful last night. Look at Yeah, it. that one will stay. We just have to, we have to clean out this pond. And, uh, now, you can clean it out without, don't damage your last Like this, that can go. That will open all that up right there. Yes, sir. That's what we're wanting. Uh, this, this can go. That's a tallow tree. Uh, These are all tallow, aren't they? Yeah, that whole thing these, is. Uh, yeah, now that's wax myrtle there. Believe me, I'm telling you, I, I don't see any seeds or berries. But if they get the berries on them, and you can boil them, just the scent, you can boil them leaves and sell the scent. Right. The scent candles with. It 
pine tree needs to go. Those yeah. Pine trees need to go. So all these trash trees through here coming out, all these pine trees that are, they don't. Go that shallow tree needs to grow. Y'all got it looking beautiful. Thanks, Dad. I didn't know, but I swear. <laughs> but it was a persimmon tree for a second. I was hoping to see some pepper grass trees, but I don't. I figured you'd have a pecan tree or two back in here, but I don't see any. But the pecan tree is a native of this area, and you find them a lot of times all up in the woods. No, it's not a good tree. Yes, it is a good tree. No, it is. You need to put your feet high, right up in here. Okay. <laughs> not if I want to keep my husband, I don't. No, my daddy. Tell had, him I said that. My dad's encouraging me to sneak a beehive on the property, viewers. <laughs> Maybe when we get a few more acres, I Dad. Find my nukes out here. And set it up under these trees to see if I can't catch it. Uh, yeah. I'm telling you, we need to do it on the front of the property uh, where it butts up to that 300 acres because that's where you're going to find them. Well, they'd be all up. Almost kiss them. I tell you what, we have gorgeous property, man. I, I love walking through here. Oh, man, that's What's that tree? I, I promise you, I don't know. They, they got some hard to tell. Both of them are open. They're open. I don't see any, but usually the uh, Johnson Press is going to grow right along the edge of old centrals. They make a beautiful shape. I don't see any. <laughs> so we just wanted you guys to join us as we did a little oh yeah a bigger one a little property check just seeing uh what native trees and uh things we have growing on our property see oh yeah oh here look, look under here look at your persimmons it's good to know. It's good to know, guys, what food, edible foods you have on your property. Oh, uh, jelly, Don't accidentally uh, cut those down. Oh, my God. Jelly, jam, persimmon wine from the old people. Persimmon wine. Yeah. yeah I yeah. know. I'm laughing because Stephen always says that the economy crashes. We need to learn how to make wine because there's just too many people That's that good. like to drink that would, would basically rather drink than eat. 95% Cowboys would ride up and buy a drink. <laughs> and that's when they got a little house, they kept coming. 